Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Now some of the viewers have been saying that there is so much negativity nowadays about doing postdoc, about doing PhD and so on. And essentially a lot of them are somewhat despondent about their current situation in life. So I thought I'll make some videos about people who have done well after their PhD and postdoc and who have essentially made huge jumps through their postdoc. And so today I'm going to discuss a person in the area of fluid mechanics. And I will go through his basic CV outline. This is a public person, he's there in Wikipedia also, but I'm going to mostly focus on the degrees he obtained and the institutions he went to, because I think that is very important to think about possible role models which you can have for yourself. So let's start at the beginning. So essentially he did his bachelor's degree from the Vishweswarya College of Engineering in Bangalore University and this was in 1968. Now following this he did his master's degree from Indian Institute of Science Bangalore in 1970 and PhD from Indian Institute of Science Bangalore in 1975. His PhD was on turbulent boundary layers. Now following his PhD and this is where he makes his first jump, he went for a postdoc to the University of Sydney. Then he did another postdoc stint at the University of Newcastle and both the University of Sydney and the University of Newcastle are Australian universities. After that he made another jump and he went to Johns Hopkins University for another stint of postdoc. So the period of 1975 to 1979 he was essentially a postdoc and so this is a period of four years. So essentially this gives you some idea. A period of four year postdoc was very useful for him to strengthen his knowledge and background and depth in fluid mechanics. Now following this in 1979 he joined Yale University as an assistant professor. In 85 he was promoted to full professor in 1987 he was chairman in Yale University. Now in 2002 he went to the University of Maryland College Park and 2003 to 2009 he was director at the International Center of Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy. And then finally he was the Dean of Engineering at New York University. So you can see that this gentleman has a very illustrious career in the field of fluid mechanics and we would say in the field of engineering and science in general and some of the things which we can learn from him is the fact that he did a PhD in a very deep and difficult and topical problem which is turbulent boundary layers now as many of you know this is a problem of enormous practical importance because boundary layers essentially are the physics behind the creation of drag and as far as aircraft are concerned drag is a major problem for aircraft prediction of drag is a huge problem for anything which flies through air so his stint in postdoc in australia in the university of sydney and the university of newcastle was very useful to give him exposure to the global system and then he moved to Johns Hopkins University to further cement his knowledge and exposure to global science in general and after that he continued in the US and also he had another stint in Italy. So essentially there are a few things to learn from this career path. One of these things is that do not let your bachelor's degree dissuade you from applying to top level universities for your masters and PhD. Thereafter you can make another move to some place where you think you may have better facilities, better equipment, better libraries to do your work and do not be shy of doing more than one postdoc. So in several cases maybe you want to do two to three postdocs for relatively short periods of time 
and then these can help you essentially develop breadth. So during the PhD, you develop depth and during these postdocs, you can develop breadth. And following this, you are very ready for getting into an assistant professor position at a university. Most likely you have published several good journal papers in top journals which are ranked well in the web of science or scopus or they are well known professional journals within the field concerned. So this was my take on the possibility of using a postdoc to become a superstar and I hope this motivates you and this lays out some information about how you can think about planning your PhD career and your postdoc to become a scientific superstar. So I will end this video now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.